and now we're in Tel Aviv, and uh, I'll talk today about the uh, ability in repeated games with vector payoffs. And this is a joint work with uh, Ehud Lerer, uh, who is also with me at Tel Aviv, uh, here, and Dario Bauso uh, from uh, Sicily. Uh, actually, this work started uh, in Eriche uh, when I heard uh, a talk of, uh, of uh, Dario. And uh, whatever he talked about, the core, the non core in, uh, in uh, dynamic cooperative games, I told him that this is approachability what he's doing. And he didn't know what approachability is. And so we started talking about approachability. And from here to there, uh, actually, we realized that what he's doing is not exactly approachability, but what we are doing here. So, what we are doing here? We are talking about repeated games, two player infinitely repeated games with vector payoffs. So we have a two-dimensional matrix and in each entry of the matrix we have a payoff, a payoff vector, okay? uh, as in Blackwell's original paper in 1956. Um, two payoff vectors? We have, no, one payoff vector. Oh, okay. Okay? This is uh, the payoff that I play one game. Okay? So it is as if a zero-sum game. Yeah. So player two is nature, or whatever, and uh, player one is me, and this is my payoff, which is multidimensional. Okay. For example, if I am the worker and you are my boss, then the contract that we will sign okay, uh, is my payoff, which is the amount of, of my salary, my salary, my uh, days uh, of leave, etc., social uh, uh, benefits, etc. This is my payoff vector. And the total payoff up to time n, up to stage n, is Gn, capital Gn. This is my total payoff up to stage n. And then Blackwell defined in 1956 the notion of approachability. And he said that a set of payoff vectors, okay, so not a single payoff, but if we have a set of payoff vectors, A, this set is approachable by player one, if player one has a strategy such that the average payoff converges to this set with probability one, whatever player two is doing. Okay. So uh, this is Blackwell's original 56 definition. And our new definition is simply uh, to replace the average payoff with the total payoff. So we say that a set of payoff vectors A is attainable by player one if the sum of payoffs, if player one has a strategy such that the sum of payoffs up to stage n, as n goes to infinity, converges to A, whatever player two is doing. So very similar, but different. And now you have a new notion, a new concept, and you can start uh, asking what are this, can you characterize attainable sets, uh, whatever you want. And this is what we are doing. Uh, why are we interested in this uh, concept? Uh, okay, so Moti is not here, but he's always uh, bothered by why I'm doing uh, stochastic games, undiscounted stochastic games. Anyway, why are we doing uh, this attainability thing? Well, two motivations. One, control theory. Suppose that there is a demand uh, for my products, for products, and Dn is the demand at stage n, and it is multidimensional. Supply, Sn, at stage n. I can control the supply. The demand is controlled by the market. Okay, it is uncontrolled. So I control the supply, uh, I, nobody I, controls the demand, and what is the difference? Sn minus Dn. This is the excess supply, supply minus demand. Okay? So this is, the difference is the amount that, is, that I have to store in my warehouse. Okay? Now my warehouse is limited, it has a given capacity. I cannot, in my storerooms, I cannot store more than five kilos of bananas and whatever. Okay. 
So the sum of excesses must not uh, be higher than the given limit of my store. Okay, so the sum of payoffs, stage payoffs, is bounded. So this is a case where I would like to bound not the average payoff, but the total payoff. This so is talk about bounded sets A. This is the motivation, okay. Okay? the introduction. Okay. And then I have an unrelated theory. What is the meaning of negative What is? The meaning of if, if, S, if D is larger than S. Uh, D cannot be larger than S, right? Or at least not of, of whatever you have in your warehouse plus your current so supply. It's a maximum of that than zero. What he says that you should put S at the end, okay. maximum is zero. Okay. If you want to have maximum with zero, fine, that's fine with me. Um, a second motivation is the capital adequacy ratio. So the Basel Accord, uh, it uh, tells us uh, how banks, uh, I mean, what is the amount of capital that banks should have. Um, and <coughs> CN is the bank's capital at stage N. And AN is the bank's risk-weighted assets at stage N. Then the Basel Accord uh, 1, 2, and 3 tell us that the ratio must be higher than 8%. Actually, if you actually look at the Basel Accord, and I did, then there are three such ratios. The tier 1 capital should be at least 3.5%, the, the, the tier 2, and whatever. Okay, it is multidimensional. And this is what is important for me. Okay, here indeed we look at the, at the ratio, but if you take the natural log, then it is a difference. So we fall in our class of the total payoff, which is multidimensional, should be at least something, or at most something. Okay? We have an introduction to econometric. Now we go on to the real stuff. The model. A repeated game with vector payoffs is what we are doing, and payoffs are d-dimensional. Okay. Um, A1 is the set of actions of player 1, player 2, and the payoff function multidimensional. We consider the game in continuous time. Why continuous time? Because we know to prove theorems on continuous time. The theorems are incorrect for discrete time. We will see that. We will see that. So we are considering the game in continuous time. As we all know, in continuous time, there are technical difficulties in defining the play path. So we have to use carefully, to carefully define our strategies so that the play path is well defined. So we do that. So we consider strategies. First, there are behavioral strategies, meaning at every time instance, the decision maker chooses a mixed action a probability distribution over actions, and then we, we extend the payoff function in a multilinear fashion so that the payoff is actually the average payoff in every time period. Okay. So this is uh, the strategies that we use. In addition, what we do so that play, the play path is well defined, we assume that there is an increasing sequence of integers such that the decision maker at time zero, he, def he decides what to do between time zero and the first, time, the first uh, stopping time. This is a time, okay? The first integer, tau i2. Then at time tau i2, he looks at the past, what he did and what the other player did up to that time, and he decides what to do between time tau i2 and tau i3, etc. So, so, no, no, the, sequ the sequence tau i is, dif is fixed, okay? okay? So at the, at the beginning of time, the decision maker, player i, chooses a sequence of integers, and then he, he knows how to play. Time zero, he decides how to play until time tau one. Regardless, the alarm clock. The alarm clock at time zero. Exactly. He has an alarm clock that that, uh, that wakes him up at each tau i. At each tau i, he looks what happens in what happened in the past, and according to what 
the other player play. In the past, he decides what to do until the next time he will be woken up. So he plays constant strategies between constant Yeah, exactly. Constant he's mixed or constant realized? Constant behavior. So I mix at the same ratio continuously. No, no, you can change. Uh, you, you, uh, if, if there is a given time interval now, I, I'm at time zero, yes. and I should play that until time one. Okay. 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 I, at time zero, yes. the decision maker should decide how to play between time zero and time one. Yes. So he can, he can decide between time zero and time one half, I'm going to play half top, half bottom, okay. and then between time one half and one, I'm going to play one third, two thirds. Okay? And this is how he plays until time one. Then at time tau, he wakes up, he looks what the other player played in the past, and then he decides between time one and 1.2, I will play this next action, between 1.2 and 1.3, I will play that next action, and so compute the payoffs according to this mixture. To the mixture. Integrated over yeah, the. Yeah, exactly. This is a mathematical definition, and it works. Okay. What is the econometrica excuse? Okay, we will say that time runs fast, but let's let's leave it. Uh, yes, uh, Elon, I mean, yeah. Can't you assume it as of general that the set of integers is just all the integers? Why do you add this partition? I mean, what what is the gain from? Uh, uh, I would like actually those uh, the, the the times in which the clock. Uh, re uh, wakes you up to be uh, really, uh, I mean, the interval should be, should be short. Okay, so that you can, you have, you can revise your function, your strategy uh, many times. Okay, so the, uh, in our constructions, the distance, the difference between two adjacent tiles will be very small. Epsilon. They, they are integers, no? No, no, no. Integers, that's oh, no, 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 sequence of real numbers, sorry. Sequence oh, of real okay. numbers. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, so, so you, the, the behavior strategies are, are, are independent? Or, or, uh, the mixtures are in, uh, essentially... No, no, I, what I mean is throughout the interval, are you, are you using this, you, you use one random device that chooses the... Um, the strategy for the whole interval, or at each at each moment of time you do independent of the other moments, or my payoff at time t. Mama, my payoff at time t would be u of the mixed action that player one played at time t. And so this is the linear extension. Okay, this is my payoff. H time t. This is already the mixed extension. Okay, so you're you're looking basically at the mixed extension and and, yeah. and and doing a pure strategy. Exactly. Pure strategy in the linear extension. No, but no. Yeah, yes. This is what I expect. Expected uh, yes. But what do you observe? You observe also the mixed action? Yeah, I observe the mixtures of the other player. But you, you can condition on the other player in, in the middle of the interval? No, 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 no. You wake up only at those <laughs> times, <laughs> tau, and only then you, you, can, can, uh, you can condition your, uh, your play. So this is the class of strategies that we use. And with those strategies, play is, uh, is deterministic. Given the strategies of the players, play is well-defined, uh, well uh, and, uh, and uh, that's it, well-defined, and no problem. And then, if we denote by gt, small gt, the payoff at time t, given the mixed actions of the players, so this is the linear extension, and we define capital gt to be the total payoff up to time t. So this is the integral of the stage payoff, between time 0 and t. And then we say that a set A of payoffs in Rd is strongly attainable by player 1 if he has a strategy such that the distance between the total payoff and A converges to 0, whatever player 2 plays. 
and the set is attainable if for every epsilon I can, uh, the, the total payoff <laughs> uh, gets up to epsilon to G. Uh, so this is uh, our definition of strongly attainable uh, point, uh, sets and attainable sets. Yeah. 50, great. Um, actually what we, are, what we know to do is uh, to, uh, to uh, and what I will consider, are sets which contain only a single point, X. Okay, so I will talk about uh, attainable vectors and strongly attainable vectors. Okay, we have students who work on, uh, on more general results, but uh, we are all, in, all we can do is uh, one, uh, one vector. So, our first theorem is that, uh, this is merely an observation, uh, the set of attainable vectors uh, is a closed and convex cone. So this is uh, really an observation. Um, so that to prove that it is a cone, we have to, uh, to prove that if x is a, an attainable vector, then also any multiple of f by a scalar is an attainable vector, and that the sum of every two vectors uh, in the cone is also in the cone. So suppose that x is an attainable vector. Yeah. If x is an attainable vector, then uh, there is a strategy sigma, sigma 1 of player 1, that ensures that the, uh, the, the total payoff uh, converges to x. How can we, uh, how can we uh, attain beta, of, beta times x, where well, beta is, for example, 2? How can we attain 2x? Okay. We simply change time. Okay. We play sigma 1, okay. uh, one uh, slower in a ratio of 2, okay. uh, 2 times slower. Okay, and then, uh, and then uh, this integral will be two times uh, That's because large. you're not known as an integral, so you come with the payoff would be always 7, no matter what. You are not going to tell if you get 14. Something is, you are not normalizing things. Suppose that you have a game where no matter what you do, yeah, the payoff equals, the instantaneous payoff is 7. Okay? Then the then, total payoff then goes to infinity. Okay, then you cannot oh. get 14. That's correct. I didn't say that you get 14. In your, pay, in your game, well, the payoff is okay, always there's, seven. There's some of the normalization here. I do not normalize. That's, but that's bad. The fact no, that no, 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 no. That's, that's bad. not standard. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blackwell, he normalizes. He looks at the average payoff. That's great. But you don't have to look on the average well, payoff. The sum of the payoff. You, cool. you look at the total but payoff. See, if you do any discretization of it, so continuous time is, is a nice tool, which is a good approximation of, of discretizing. I mean, at least discretizing can see what's going on. You cannot get twice as much in any discretized version. That's good. It's good that you came here because it's not trivial to you. Right? right? I, no, but uh, so, we look. So the fact that any continuous time is a fiction. But he it's already, but he already said good. that earlier when he said it's not going to work for discrete time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's, okay, let's look at it in a mathematical way. This is a mathematical problem. Okay, let's leave the introduction to okay. later to the journal version. So, <laughs> no! But what was the quantifier? I know, I know that the I was the A strategy is given by a partition and how to play in each uh, okay. interval. With the epsilon you had, uh, I can change the partition. It's yes, you can change it. A different strategy, a different partition. Ah, OK. Strategy okay. is associated with the, Yeah. Okay. Yes. OK. So indeed, here I look at the total payoff. And therefore, in a game in which the payoff is always 7, it means that at every day, supply exceeds demand by 7. It means that at some point your warehouse explodes. Okay, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, put all your the excess supply in your warehouse. But it will explode much faster if you define your intervals much shorter. 
Of course. No, okay. No, the interface has already changed. That has nothing to do with the flow of chaos. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you for the a times change. when you revise has nothing to do with the, the, the way of the That should be a constant. No, no, no. Because you take here the integral. I know. So, yes, yes. so yes. if if the payoff, if the instantaneous payoff is seven, it means that at, uh, every one second you get seven. Right. And okay. then if my intervals are every half a second, but the and every second I no, get no, no. fourteen. No, you you, the, you take the integ the the payoff between the payoff at time t yes. is the integral up to time t. Yes. It is independent of the times of the, the times in which I revise my strategy. Okay, that's why okay. I seven no matter what you do. So if the addition is whatever. Okay. okay. So can you explain how you get two? Yeah. yeah so okay. suppose that I take the strategy sigma one. And I may I I instead of playing at time t, instead of playing sigma one at t, I play sigma one at one half of t. Okay, so I slow time by a factor of two. Okay? You play and very fast. Excuse me? Or you you're playing very or, fast. Or I play faster okay. by a factor of two. Okay, so you can you know, know. Know. Yeah. 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 GS GS is seven. Then this is seven. Why do you slow time? Because I mean, you are integrating over t. You mix seven. You mix two things. No, no. If it's seven, then you get infinity. I know. Yeah. But so what I say is, that suppose that x is an attainable vector. In the case that the payoff is always seven, you can only attain infinity, not seven, not x, right? So you are talking about a case which does not fall into this theorem. So we suppose that x is an attainable so vector. Plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. And then if you do it twice as fast, you can get the difference which is twice as high at a certain point in time. Otherwise, how do you get anything that's different than infinity? So, uh, so that's the strategy of the line. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> so, suppose, suppose that uh, the strategy sigma 1 attains x. This means that whatever the other player is doing, where is the hero, the chalk? Um, <laughs> this is much better. Much better. Yeah, it's closer to Sergio, and then Sergio <laughs> has, uh, uh, will shout. Uh, you, you are on so. this side of the room. It's symmetric. So, so this means, suppose that player one plays sigma one. So whatever player two plays, there is some flow of payoffs. So suppose this is the, the flow of payoffs, u of t. And what we know is that the integral of the payoff is x. OK, it converges to x. <coughs> what happens if player 1, instead of playing sigma 1, he plays sigma 1 faster, twice faster? Okay. So what will happen to the flow? So if here player 1 played sigma 1, at time t and player 2 play whatever player 2. This is for every sigma 2 that player 2 plays. Suppose that here player 1 plays twice faster and player 2 plays any strategy sigma 2. So let's look at the payoff here, what happens here in the original case where player 1 plays the original uh, sigma 1 with no faster time, but and player two actually plays this, this strategy, but he, uh, sorry, he slower times also by a factor of two. So what, okay, so this is a strategy of player two. And then we know that the, the area under this integral, under this function converges to x. What happens here? Everything runs twice faster or twice slower. Okay, one of them. Okay, uh, yeah, if here it 2t, so it's twice faster. Okay, so here time, time runs twice faster than here, both for player 1 and for player 2. If the area here is x, the area here is x divided by 2. So if sigma 1 attains x, then sigma 1 mark, oh, that runs twice faster attains x over 2. And therefore, uh, this is one, uh, one property of the cone that uh, we need to prove. Yeah. A question that relates to what Sergio said. Could you just 
play in odd period and ignore what happens in like play the play in odd periods your strategy that you're doing now and then in even periods play it again and that, by that doubling your just ignoring the when when you're when you're so playing in an odd period ignoring the history of even periods and so what period. will happen actually uh, this is something that you can do uh, for the other part of the theorem to prove that uh, that it is a cone you need to prove that if uh, sorry this is enough to prove that it is a cone to prove that it is a convex cone you need to prove that if x and y are attainable then x plus y is also attainable okay. so, so specifically x plus x specifically x plus x but one second so how can we prove that x plus y is attainable so one way is play a strategy that uh, that converges to x, such that the, the total payoff converges to x, and when the total payoff is close to x, start to play a strategy, forget past play, and start to play a strategy that attains y. Okay, and then the total payoff will converge to x plus y. Correct. So if you would like to have also strong attainability, what you do is you, exactly, you divide time into odd unit intervals and even unit intervals. Okay, in the odd ones you, you attain x, in the even ones you, fall, you attain y. Okay, so this is exactly the way to achieve the second, uh, the second uh, thing. Anyway, uh, so this is uh, the theorem. Uh, it, is al it also holds, as Ron said, for uh, strongly attainable vectors, except of closure. Okay, so we know that the set of uh, attainable vectors is closed. This follows from the definition, nothing uh, more than that. But we do not know whether the set of strongly attainable uh, points is closed or not. Can we characterize which vectors are, uh, it, are attainable and which are not? So, first, one condition is that if x is attainable, then the vector 0 must be attainable. Why? Because you must have, you, you must have a strategy that con such that the total payoff converges to x. But once you get close to x, you must remain around x which means that the total payoff from that point on is zero, or close to zero. Or you can do what you did here, this is scaling. The divide is still on the stand, but this is scaling, is it also zero? Exactly, yeah. You don't have to use that argument. You are correct. Yeah, in fact, what we can prove is that if there is an attainable, a bounded attainable set, <coughs> then the, ve the vector zero is attainable. Yeah, the, and this is uh, easy. And another, uh, another necessary and sufficient condition for the vector x to be attainable is that for every function f from the set of mixed actions of player 1 to the set of mixed actions of player 2, the vector x is in the cone generated by the payoffs. Okay. Um, so I do not have time uh, to dwell on the proof. The proof, uh, actually, the, there is only one direction here that is actually difficult. Uh, but uh, you can have uh, the paper later. Further questions. So here all we did was to characterize attainable sets. Uh, we have uh, further results, but uh, essentially only, uh, uh, sorry, attainable vectors. We do not know how to characterize attainable sets. So this is uh, an open question. Um, we do not know how to characterize strongly attainable sets or strongly attainable vectors. We simply do not know it. Um, attainability in discrete time. This is also an open question. We do not know anything about it. Uh, so continuous time simplifies everything. Discrete time. Payoff may jump. But the, the, the total set of an attainable set which is not zero or infinity? Yes. Can you show it? Uh, and uh, the relation between attainability and approachability. So, for example, we know that if the vector zero is attainable if and only if it is approachable in the game in discrete time. Okay, so the payoff zero is attainable in the game in continuous time if and only if it is approachable in the game in discrete time. 
Okay, but what else can we say about uh, approachable sets and attainable sets? Uh, this is also an area to explore. And finally, this is a comment made by Johannes Horner after my presentation in Toulouse, which is uh, general approachability. GN is the total payoff. Suppose that you have a sequence of sets, AN, in the payoff space. I will fail. And uh, now suppose that we, we would like GN to converge to AN. The distance between GN and AN to go to zero. In the approachability business, what we wanted is GN to go to N times A. Here in attainability, we want GN to go to A. But what happens with other sets AN, sequences of sets AN? AN is equal to the square root of N times A. Okay, or something, so then uh, this is another uh, area that calls for further research. Yeah? Do you know uh, any relation between the closure of attainable, <coughs> of strongly attainable vectors and uh, unattainable vectors? No. So thank you very much.